Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 4th, 2024, video two of the day. Now, I was going to wait, produce a video, maybe October 5th, and I was going to include these clips, uh, but you know what? This is all about George Galloway. This is his channel, and then, of course, another video that I found uh, out of Sky News. Uh, I, I want you to understand that that missile strike uh, by Iran on uh, Israel was just a message. Uh, it did some significant damage. Uh, you know, and, and uh, a lot of Americans, I mean, you've got Hodges and Petraeus and Bolton, you know, and all the media, and they're all going, we got to strike Iran, we got to strike Iran. And of course, in my last video, I talked about the fact that yeah, you can strike Iran, <laughs> and then the Straits of Hormuz shut down, the, the oil refineries in Saudi Arabia get destroyed, the oil refineries in the, uh, is, what is it, the Arab Emirates, or Emirates, god dang it, I'm getting tongue-tied here, uh, you know, I mean, the whole Middle East would go up in flames, I mean, do you think the world's going to survive something like that? I mean, we got Russia, you know, telling... Uh, Israelis to pull out of, <laughs> pull, get get the hell out of Israel. Uh, you know we got the Iranian uh, Israelis bombing Syria. I mean, it, it's just like I mean, you're just like, are we in the end days? Is this is this the ride of the four horsemen in the apocalypse? Uh, we've got satanic forces in charge of the U.S. government. Uh, anyway, I just want to put this up. This is all George Galloway. Okay, and I'm going to dedicate this X post to him and his channel, the mother of all talk shows. I encourage you to go watch it at all times. He is one of the greatest orators on the planet, uh, and he brings to uh, the front everything that you need to know. And, uh, and so I hope I've given him enough uh, credit <laughs> for stealing all of his material. Peace out. Stay free. I think that a star was born over the last few years as Professor Syed Mohammed Morandi came more and more often on the so-called mainstream television. But people like us were the first to recognize his brilliance. But his performance on mainstream news has literally had people standing up in their living rooms and cheering him on. He's been very loyal to us. He never says, no, I can't come on the mother of all talk shows because I'm going on CNN. Oh, far from it. Please welcome back Professor Syed Mohammed Marandi to the mother of all talk shows. Professor, congratulations on your media round. Uh, they are beyond compare, as I always knew and predicted uh, they would be. But what about the Iranian response? to the multiple egregious criminal offenses uh, that Israel has committed against your country. Uh, just in recent times, never mind uh, longer ago than that. I called it earlier performative. Uh, I'm guessing you won't like that. But by performative, I mean this, that a deliberate attempt was made and it was successful not to kill anybody, a deliberate attempt was made not to destroy any Israeli uh, civilian uh, infrastructure, uh, that the targets were entirely state and military targets. In that sense, it was performative, but a very impressive performance. That's my analysis. What's yours? Well, first, I'd like to thank you for your very kind words and uh, you're the master and uh, I learned from you and I continue to learn from you. And uh, I hope to be of some use to the audience and uh, to work alongside you and a, a, a growing number of people who are uh, active against uh, war and genocide. Uh, thankfully, things have changed a lot since uh, uh, a year or two ago. Uh, I, I think that uh, we have to look at it uh, in context, in context, uh, in, a, in the broader context. In April, 
when the Iranian embassy was struck and the Iranians wanted to carry out a response, um, I think, I'm sure you recall, that Iran used a large number of drones and a few missiles. Most of the, of the drones were all very old, dirt cheap, as they say, and the missiles were mostly old missiles. The, the Americans, they did the heavy lifting, and the Israelis brought most of them down uh, to great cost. I think the Americans spent two and a half billion dollars and the Israelis almost a, a billion and a half. But uh, the real objective, and some of the more advanced missiles got through and hit their targets, but the real objective of Iran, the number one objective was to uh, gather intelligence about uh, the defense capabilities that the Americans and the Israelis and the French and the British and everyone else had mustered together. And this time around, the Iranians uh, were much more serious. And you're absolutely correct. The Iranians did not strike civilian targets. Uh, the Iranians struck key military targets. From what I'm hearing uh, from Tehran, there was enormous damage to the infrastructure of the targets that were struck. And the Iranians said immediately that if the Israelis choose to respond, which I think uh, will probably happen and uh, will probably happen soon, that the Iranians will strike again and it will strike again much harder. And I think probably the Americans and the Israelis um, miscalculated. They didn't think that Iran would hit so hard or that the Iranians had uh, such uh, advanced weapons and in such large numbers. And I think uh, if the Israelis do continue this, uh, they will be outgunned. The Iranian strikes will be massive and they can go on for weeks and months because Iran has many underground missile uh, tunnels and missile bases across the country. Uh, which can't be hit. And the reason is that Iran prepared them for potential war with the United States. After the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, the Iranians began to develop these capabilities. So uh, Israel is not the United States. It's completely dependent on the United States and the West to sustain itself. So I, I think that any escalation, any further escalation by the Israelis actually hurts the Israeli regime more than anyone else and empowers the, res the collective resistance and the axis of resistance. But I'm sure that the Israelis are hoping otherwise. But usually what I've noticed at least is that Western powers and the Israelis, since they look down upon the rest of the world, their calculations are usually made in arrogance. And that arrogance and hubris is what uh, brings about their defeat. And I think we saw that in Gaza. We saw that alongside the border with Lebanon. They murdered uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. I was there. I was literally a, a, th a, a thousand meters away when they struck Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah and but slaughtered hundreds of people. I was there actually today as well. I went to see the neighborhood. They're still digging people out from under the rubble in that particular attack. Um, they thought that this was a big win, but um, it wasn't. I think it raised the stature of Hezbollah and made Said Hassan Nasrullah a bigger hero than he, than it was perceived before. He's much more popular across the region and the world. Hezbollah is now, everyone is looking to Hezbollah. Um, its popularity is, is going to have an impact. And the, and the soldiers and the commandos and the officers, they're extremely highly motivated. And I think, I'm sure you've seen the news today, the Israelis tried to enter Lebanon and they were badly mauled by uh, Hezbollah forces and not by the Rizwan Brigade. They, they have not been a part of the fighting yet. So I think the Israeli regime always overestimates its capabilities, under its, underestimates its foes, and that is what one reason why it's losing. We'll come back to the Iran front uh, in a minute. Uh, let's go to the Lebanese front. 
uh, which you have in any case segued uh, into there. Uh, it was a very bad day for the Israeli invasion force. Uh, I say invasion force, but they're, they're scarcely over the border and are already sustaining very serious damage. Because, of course, uh, for Israelis who don't want to be there, uh, whose mind is half on the beach, uh, these are not people who particularly keen to die for Benjamin Netanyahu. Many of them may even be political opponents uh, of his. Their morale must have taken a hell of a beating today, on day one, in the first field, in the first forest. What do you say? I agree completely. And I think it was both a combination of arrogance, but also the fact that many of these Israelis are not prepared to fight. Uh, they've, first of all, been fighting for over a, for almost a year now in Gaza. They're tired. They've had many casualties. Uh, the, 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 the reservists, many of them, are not performing uh, well at all, according to the report. Some are not even reporting to duty. Uh, but also, you're absolutely correct. The Israelis have been pampered by... Uh, the collective West. The, the West has been pampering this regime all the time. Otherwise, it is without the West, it would not last more than a few days on the battlefield. And so these men uh, and women, their lives have been very easy over there. They, they were only used to, during when they were wearing uniform, they were used to humiliating Palestinians in the West Bank or guarding the apartheid wall in Gaza or the West Bank and shooting at people who approach the, uh, the the apartheid wall and shooting them in the head or in the knee and having target practice. This was the, the, the very difficult work that they had back then. Or they go into the West Bank, they go into houses, beat people up, uh, take over their houses, take photos of themselves humiliating Palestinians. That was the usual job that they had, not fighting a serious military force like Hezbollah, which is highly trained and which has prepared itself for this war for the last um, 18 years. They've been developing thousands of kilometers of tunnels throughout the south uh, and central part of Lebanon and probably the north as well. And uh, the Israelis, they thought that they scored decisive wins by assassinating a few people, but you know this better than I. Beirut has always been the weakest link. It is a center for espionage. Uh, this was the case during the PLO here. And uh, to, uh, and Western embassies, Western journalists, Western NGOs, especially over the last couple of decades, this has become a thing. Uh, all of these are ways it means to gather intelligence. So many, all these ref impoverished refugees, but also people like the right-wing militias, you recall, Jaja's uh, Lebanese forces who were allied to the Israelis. And uh, during the 1982 invasion of Lebanon, uh, they, alongside the Israelis, went into the Sabra Shatila camp, which is not very far from where we are. And in less than 48 hours, they killed almost 4,000 people, Palestinians, ordinary Palestinians, and some Lebanese. So these, uh, these massacres that we're seeing today carried out by the Israeli regime and their allies, they're not new. And it doesn't have anything to do with Hezbollah. It goes back way before Hezbollah. But the point is that uh, Lebanon uh, is not Beirut. Beirut, the Israeli regime scored uh, some um, successes, which I think in the long run are detrimental to Israeli interests because Hezbollah has become more popular and Said Hassan Nasrullah has become extremely popular outside of the, uh, the those beyond the the, the 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 people who used to or who always loved him, and you could see that on the streets over the last, when he when it was announced that he was martyred. But uh, Hezbollah's capabilities across the country, its military capabilities are untouched. The underground capabilities are completely untouched. And the Israelis have, as you pointed out, they have not yet set foot into this country and they're all already suffering major casualties. Imagine what it will, be, will it will be like when they try to get in 
to the country and advance 20 kilometers inside or 30 kilometers inside. It'll be a bloodbath. And it's carnage as usual for the uh, poor prisoners in the Gaza concentration camp. So angry were the Israeli regime at Iran's uh, response, uh, the, they, they slaughtered children in an orphanage. Now, actually, we've become inured to hospitals being destroyed, schools being destroyed. It's a new law for Netanyahu to murder children in an orphanage. Is the possibility of the wider war likely to make things even worse for the people in Gaza? Or might Israel's attention have to be diverted elsewhere? Well, I'd just like to add that after Iran's retaliation to Israeli provocations, and I just want to remind the audience, and I'm sure they know because your audience is very politically aware, uh, the Iranian response was because of the murder of uh, Ismail Haniyeh, the, the martyrdom of, is, is of Ms. Ismail Haniyeh, who was a guest of the president of Iran uh, and his companion, and also the murder of the Iranian general. And uh, so, and of course, Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah and a host of other reasons and provocations that uh, the Israelis carried out against Iran. Uh, there are a host of reasons why the Iranians retaliated. But instead of uh, you, and the Iranians, as we were discussing earlier, struck military tar targets. In As revenge, last night here in Beirut, the Israelis pounded southern Beirut till morning. And today we went to Dahiye, downtown Beirut, which you know, uh, and uh, you've, you've, you've had TV shows uh, there. Uh, they they brought down many buildings, apartment blocks, uh, and, and we went today and saw some of these blocks that were struck this morning. There was smoke rising, and uh, they were constantly telling us to move, to to leave, so that because they were afraid of more airstrikes. But when I was walking through what in one area, there were uh, five apartment blocks. We were told because there was just ru uh, rubble. Uh, they said there were five apartment blocks here. And uh, I was just thinking, maybe people right now are still alive underneath. And it, you know, even the, it, just thinking about it made me feel sick. So, out of revenge, they went and slaughtered orphans in Gaza and started destroying uh, southern Beirut. Yet, Western journalists, for the most part, mainstream journalists, legacy media journalists are only talking, they, they, they erased this from history. Even when they murdered Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah, when he was martyred, they, they focus on saying Hezbollah, a stronghold, Hezbollah site, whereas they slaughtered hundreds of people in order to kill him. And, and they said that, well, they're embedded in the population and they're hiding among the population. And then last night we saw CNN in Tel Aviv say the Mossad building is in a densely populated area and people are at risk. Why, why doesn't CNN, why doesn't Western media call that uh, a, 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 an, a, an example of, of the Israeli regime hiding among its own civilian population? In fact, Hezbollah created those tunnels under, Be under Beirut so that the Israelis would not bother to strike civilians because it was so deep. But they used 83 one-ton missiles, the, the Israeli regime. Uh, it was amazing. As I said, I was close by in order to kill him. And as and today, I, when we went there, they were, as I said, they were, they're still digging people out. So this is a barbaric regime. But you, when you speak to the, when I've been speaking to most journalists, most white mainstream Western journalists, even some of them in Beirut, it doesn't seem to matter to them. It's about Israel defend. It's all about Israel defending itself. Everything is about Israel defending itself. It's, it's stunning. Yes, uh, uh, banal but stunning. We're used to it by now. I can see it still surprises you. Finally, uh, Professor, let us uh, return to the Iran front. Uh, you believe, I believe, and 
almost three quarters of our audience already believes in our poll uh, that Netanyahu is going to attack Iran. Of course, there are a number, uh, there's a spectrum of potential attacks. We've seen that before. But let's assume uh, a, a significant Israeli attack on Iran. Will Iran respond immediately or will we be back in the same territory we've been in over the last couple of months, in your opinion? I know you don't make these decisions, you don't speak for the government in Iran, but as an acute observer, is it likely that Iran would respond immediately to such an egregious assault? Well, George, over the past few weeks, I've been saying that Iran is going to retaliate. And over the and as we things went forward, more and more people started attacking me and saying that I'm talking nonsense and that the Iranians won't retaliate. But ultimately, they did last night, and it was a heavy strike. I have no doubt that if the Israelis target Iran uh, in the coming hours, in the coming days, the Iranians will retaliate uh, very harshly, and it will be a more heavy strike, a significantly heavier strike than what we saw uh, yesterday. And I believe that uh, the Iranians are prepared to continue this indefinitely. And the Israelis can't do this indefinitely. It's a small regime. It's fully dependent on the West. But it's also f fighting in the West Bank, subjugating Palestinians. It's fighting on the Lebanese border, and it's being badly beaten, as we've seen today. It's failed after a year in Gaza. In the Red Sea, the Americans have failed to do anything. The Iraqis are outraged and want revenge. The resistance in Iraq and Syria will continue to work against the regime. Uh, any escalation is going to hurt the Israelis more. And, and the only thing that I think is, um, is, uh, is possible, to, uh, at least in the eyes of Netanyahu, to save him, because I think that Netanyahu knows he will lose against Hezbollah, and he, I think he knows he'll lose against Iran. I think he's just trying, he's desperate, and wants to get the Americans into the war. And of course, that shows he does, how, that he doesn't even care about the Americans. Just like when he used a supply chains for electronic goods, he discredited Western companies and companies linked to uh, countries affiliated with the West. I'm, I'm never going to buy any Western products anymore, electric, electrical appliances or, or laptops or anything like that, because I don't trust them anymore. So he doesn't care about brand America or brand Europe or brand Korea or Japan or Taiwan. He cares about himself. He doesn't even care about Israel, in my opinion. But if the, if the Americans fall into his trap and get involved in the war, the Americans will be confronting a very different situation from the past. The resistance in Iraq will sweep America away. They will be dis expelled from Iraq. They'll, there'll be nothing left. And the Persian Gulf region, all American bases will be destroyed if there's, a, if there's fighting between Iran and the United States. And those regimes that host Americans, their oil and gas installations will be destroyed because they'll be hostile. And some of your viewers may say, well, Iran doesn't have that capability. The Americans have lost the war in the Red Sea to Ansar Allah, which has just come out of a seven-year-long genocidal war where everything in the country was destroyed. And the Americans have been unable to open the Red Sea. Does anyone really think that the Americans are going to be able to open up the Persian Gulf to oil and gas exports when Iran has all these underground uh, bases, drone and missile bases that can take out all these oil and gas installations that are right alongside the Iranian border and all those tankers that are easy targets for Iran? That would, that would mean oil and gas would go, the price would go through the roof and it would bring down the global economy and millions of people would be on the move. So I think it's very important for Americans and Europeans to recognize that uh, this type of war would uh, be would change the world. It could poten potentially destroy the world economy and the lives of 
everyone would be severely impacted as a result. So they should think twice before sacrificing themselves for a war criminal uh, and corrupt individual like Netanyahu. Professor Syed Mohammed Marandi, as always, a tour of the horizon, a tour de force. Thanks for joining us. Professor Mohammed Morandi uh, from the University of Tehran uh, joins us uh, now. Thank you very much for being with us, Professor. I just wonder, first of all, what has Iran achieved by this attack on Israel? Uh, very few of the missiles got through. It, in effect, failed. Many people are calling it a humiliation for Iran. I think that's a lot of wishful thinking on behalf you and your colleagues at Sky News, it was a massive blow to the Israeli regime. And the history of this conflict doesn't go back to last year. It is 76 years of ethno-supremacism, ethnic cleansing, and uh, this is a racist regime that you support. You, what the problem is, is that you cannot recognize that the difference between you and us is that you support racism and racial hierarchy, and we reject it. And the Israeli regime, if they dare strike back at Iran, we will hit them much harder next time. We will beat them into submission. Well, they, w th well, they will strike back, won't they? Um, no sovereign country can put up with having 180 ballistic missiles fired at them. So they will hit back, they will hit hard, and they could well hit your nuclear facilities, your oil production installations, they could cause Iran serious damage. Listen, instead of the rhetoric, be real, because you're misleading your own people. Iran has countless underground missile sites with hundreds of thousands of missiles across the country. They were made after the U.S. invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan to deal with a potential war with the United States. So this puny regime, it is not a state, it is a colony. It is a, it is a racist, ethno-supremacist colony, colony which the people call themselves the chosen people. Unlike you, we do not believe in chosen people. And the Palestinian people on that land who've been displaced and pushed into Gaza and who've been slaughtered regularly over 76 years, we will not stand for that. All people in the whole of Palestine must be equal. The Israeli regime, if they strike Iran, we will hit them much harder next time. And they can pretend that they got away, but we hit them very hard last night. We hit their bases. And unlike the Israeli regime, which constantly carries out slaughter and genocide and is carrying out a holocaust in Gaza, we struck their military targets. Because unlike you, we actually care about human rights. Not you. Professor, Professor, let me just say that we're on the verge of, a, of an all-out war, or certainly a war between Israel and Iran. It could be a war that Iran loses. If Iran does lose that war, do you think that the current Iranian regime could survive a defeat? Because that is what, if what you say is right, and Iran is going to hit back even harder, that could be where this all ends up. Iran will not hit back harder. Iran will hit back much harder. The head of the Iranian forces says Iran will destroy, target, and destroy all of the Israeli regime's infrastructure. This was the tip of the iceberg. Iran will lose no war. The Israeli regime will. It is time for you and others to end your racism and to end your support for the superior race and to accept that all people in Palestine have equal, equal rights and the Palestinian people have a right of return. return. Jews, Christians, and Muslims are equal. Unlike what you say, they are equal and we will accept nothing less than that. The regime must go and he, all people must be treated equally. Right. And if the only thing, there's no doubt that Israel will lose, but the only variable here is the United States. If the United States gets involved, have no doubt, the US, the US will be swept out of Iraq by the Iraqi resistance. 
and all its assets in the Persian Gulf will be destroyed. All, right. Professor, all those regimes all right. that have U.S. bases will be destroyed, and the oil and gas markets will cause a situation where the global economy will collapse and millions of people will be on the move. So be careful about making stupid mistakes, and the West should stop with its arrogance and get real for once. Okay, Professor, um, thank you very much for...